Good afternoon. It's been a little dodgy here today. I came in the shop at about, uh, well, about 45 minutes ago, and uh, my computer was shut completely down. So I turned it on, and what happens? It's going through an update. Took me f almost, four, well, took 40 minutes. Um, I just just got in about five minutes ago and let, let my uh, trusted companions in so they could help me out. Let me bring them in so you guys can see their smiley faces. There's Ms. Ruby, and Mr. Wayne. Good to have you guys with us today. Evening, guys. Uh, it's been a been an exciting time. And right off the bat, I know uh, Wayne, you're not going to have a live tomorrow, right? That's right. Um, yeah. I've done something to me right now, and it, it it's been going on for about a fortnight now, and it hasn't got hasn't got any better. Um, I suffered through it last Wednesday, so I've decided this Wednesday I'm not doing a live. <laughs> not worth it. Good. Good for you. No. Um, let me, I'm going to throw you guys in the background again. And uh, so they'll be here to uh, help us out. Let us know who all's here. Also to, to uh, field any questions you might have also to inform me of anything. Um, what have, we've got here is a piece of white oak, or it's not white oak, live oak. Um, this comes from the American Southeast, uh, uh, kind of the coastal plains, uh, does not mind salt water, salt mist, what have you, uh, does very well. If you watch any of the movies set in the deep south and you see the Spanish moss hanging from the trees, kind of flowing from the breeze, chances are it was on one of these trees, a, a live oak. These trees grow to be massive. Uh, the wood is very dense, very heavy. This chunk right here, I haven't measured it yet. I trimmed it up so I could get it on the lathe. Took the corners off. And it's measuring, what, uh, 10 and a half, 10 and a half to 11 inches. Uh, and it's four, ah, four inches or so thick. I'm trying to balance too many things here. So that's what we're going to turn today, if I can keep my face shield on. Uh, got too, like I said, too many things going that and I'm still a little flustered over this uh, silly update, but it's going to be OK. Ah, um, my friend Trace Lynette uh, from Louisiana had come through here about a year ago. He was on his way up into Ohio for a funeral and knew he was coming right by me. So he made a, a planned stop to uh, stop in. He and his wife and I went out and had uh, a good barbecue meal together. I appreciated them coming in, and so uh, he brought me, as part of his trip, brought me a, this piece of white oak. I think there's another piece over there, and I gave him some, I think I gave him some walnut. <coughs> so, one of those things we do as woodturners, isn't it? We, when we travel, know we're going to meet up with somebody, we have some wood with us and to make a little bit of a trade. It's always fun to get something we we don't get normally. So, well, I'm not getting on there tight enough. Um, one of y'all want to go ahead and uh, read off who's in the chat and let us know, and yeah, we'll I'll go do from that. there and here in a minute. Yeah, they'd okay, rather right. listen to your voice, Wayne, than mine. <laughs> Thanks, Ruby. Um, the first person I've got in is Alex. That's Wurzel. Then we've got Lawrence. Uh, obviously, Ruby's here, and Ward's here from the west coast of Arizona. Uh, Woodworm Paul is in. Starting to go down now. Barry Chitty. Uh, Mark's in. Hiya, Mark. You get a lot done today? Apart from drinking? <laughs> Uh, Mike Evans is in. Uh, Todd at Glen Cove. Fred Gulliver. Deal, Old Man River. This is going to take a while. Roger Wallum. Still going down. James Crawford, Vinnie Charlton. Um, Heather, sorry, Haley, Wooden Bull, uh, Zed's in, stand by your beds, Susie the Swiss Woodturner, 
And Mark has said, sorry, you can't eat a worm tonight. He's busy drinking with Pete. Uh, yeah, typical. <laughs> uh, Thomas Kenny's in, Tim Ponder, Mick Dews. Hi, Mick. Uh, Al's in. Evening, Albert. Um, and Mark has also just put in there that he's going to cover for me tomorrow evening. Cheers, Mark. Great. Appreciate it. Uh, Rich Bulldog's in. Still going down. I'm getting there, though. Peter Kelly. Should be nearly at the bottom now. Chris Walters is in. And Mark has answered my question. He's got loads done. Extraction is sorted in another room now. Plumb through. Monitor is now on the wall and PC in a different position. Um, and the camera gantry position has is improved. Nice one, Mark. Well, I'm glad um, you got that. something done before they started drinking. Yeah. So hopefully they didn't do it while they were drinking. Oh, and Pete's in as well. Hey, you, Pete. And, uh, he, yeah, he has said Mark wouldn't let me drink until I, after uh, he'd rewired his machines the right way around. <laughs> and Rob's in from Copper Owl. I'm still going down. Um, Albert has answered to you, Ruby. Yes, he did. Yeah, I thought uh, that was another one of those hoax ones. So I will accept your uh, friend request, Albert. And there we go. I'm down at the bottom for the moment anyway. Right. Good evening, everybody. Pleased to, pleased to see you here. Good to have everybody in. Did you get Chris Walters? I did. I said hello to Chris, okay. yes. Yes, okay. hi, Chris. All right, just going to move this up a little bit. I've, I'm turning, uh, for those who are just coming in, this is a piece of live oak. Um, it is a very, it's a very hard piece of live oak. I'm using a little bit bigger bowl gouge than I normally use. Um, you guys in Europe would call this a, a half or a, yeah, half inch bowl gouge. It's a five eighths. In my way of measuring. I'm only turning it 500 RPMs. It's a little out of balance still, but it's getting closer all the time. Yeah, that can kind of bounce you around until you uh, get it shaped a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, just think of all those muscles you're giving a good workout to. <laughs> and it's more fun than going to the gym and just lifting weights. And that for sure. And when you're done, you're going to have something to show for all that effort. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike Yu from Ilminster has just come in. Hey, then, Mike. And Chris has said he finished a project. He posted on Facebook, but he'll put an updated picture of it. Good. I look forward to seeing it, Chris. All right, I'm going to move my tool rest around just a little bit again. Got one crack in it right here that I'm not going to worry about. I've got an occlusion right there. I think it'll cut out anyway. It may. Let me switch my camera and I'll, you can see what I'm talking about here. Yeah, there's that inclusion. That's definitely, that's bark. It's bark. Day, it's bark. And then pretty nice crack here that may very well turn out but it may not 
I'm not too worried about it. Um, it. It's just, it is what it is. So, and honestly, now that I'm looking at it, I meant to have this the other way around, but we're going to go with it the way it is. Kind of, kind of like what I'm seeing. So, anyway. Actually, let's go there, and you can see better what I'm doing. Is that the natural bark on that, or have you taken the bark off? This is this is the cambium, Wayne. Oh, that's the, that's the cambium. Okay. Yeah, the main bark has already come off. It was about halfway off already, and I just took it the rest of the way. It didn't, didn't make sense to even try to keep it. Yeah, yeah. Your, nope. your voice is coming through a little muffled, Doug. I think okay. that's because of the mask. It probably I may is. well be wrong. It's uh, it sounds like it. Yeah, I've got uh, got the headphones on underneath the the face mask or face shield, and uh, yeah, I I found a little little bit in a tunnel myself. Yeah, I am. Um... Evening, Alan. Alan Gibbs just co come in. Yeah, um, I'm afraid you're going to miss me again, Alan. I'm not live tomorrow night either. That's okay. Mark's supposed to replace you. Yeah, yeah. Mark is going to be doing. Mark is doing um, a stand-in tomorrow night, which um, I thought was very nice of him to, to offer that. And I had a friend who just wrote a, a novel, and he sent me a copy of it to proofread for grammar and spelling. I think that's going to occupy my time for a little while. It may well do. I had a fella do that to me one time. Well, he asked if he could, and I agreed to it. He sent it one chapter at a time, and I thought, man, this is going to take forever. Um, but then I found when he when he sent the ch first chapter to me, found out he wanted he wanted a, almost an immediate response. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I sat down and I read it. It didn't take me but it's about ten to fifteen minutes to read it, and um, found there, found some things that when I see an error, it's an error. So uh, I. I made a list of the things that I saw and I sent it back. He said, man, this is perfect. Exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> so I was yeah. real happy that he was happy. Well, right, Susie okay. had, yeah, Susie has a question for those who use a laser to laser a logo on their wood pieces. Can the laser be used on a piece of wood that's already been oiled and oiled and waxed? I'm afraid maybe, somebody in, maybe Pete could answer that. Yeah, some somebody else in the chat is gonna to have to answer that. Um yeah, I don't know. And Terry Gray has joined us. Hi Terry. Yeah, Terry's hey, Terry. in and Andy the Valley Wood Turner has joined us as well. Yep. All right. Hi Andy. I've I've heard this question answered before. But I'm gonna let someone right, who actually has a laser answer it. Mark has actually put in, yes, Susie, you can. And then he's put in a bit later on, according to Pete. Now, I figured Pete could answer that question. I have got a laser. I just haven't got it set up yet. <laughs> I'm still waiting for Lewis to send me mine. What do we got? I, I, I take that piece of wood is still is uh, quite dry, Doug. It's quite dry, yes. Quite dry. Still got some flats like on this end up here. This end just has one big flat. We'll get those out and then we'll be okay. We can move on to something. Yeah. And Terry's also put in a uh, yes, Susie. He lasers his after being waxed.
Well, I like this uh, drive center that I'm using, but it's so big, it has a hard time sinking into the wood. Yeah. Uh, well, and I didn't okay, show that earlier. On the other hand, you don't want it tunneling into the wood either. Right. It doesn't tunnel much. Um, it's so big. And the worst part is the center. The the center is huge. I'll show it to you when I get done here, uh, when I go to turn it around. It's got, it only has two blades, and they're very wide. So it does not sink into the wood much at all. <laughs> right. I'm going to read Terry's uh, thing again. Mm -hmm. Yes, Susie. Eile is a mine after being waxed. And Mark's put in, Terry is talking about his legs, though. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, you have to behave. Man, you can surely tell when I get to that those flat spots, they bump and bounce around quite a bit. So I'm going to Bring my tool rest around. We're going to concentrate on those areas. I don't normally Man. do that. I like to come from an angle all the way up, but this time it's just going to be smarter, I think. To... Yeah, the yeah. Pete's yeah. also in that uh, the live that Ruby and Mark, uh, sorry, the live Ruby and Mark crewed on, I finished, then lasered and posted on Facebook shortly after. And it came out very nice. You know, sometimes, Doug, when I get to that end, I make some cuts from the left coming into the uh, piece mm -hmm. just, just so I can find out where that top edge is going to be. Yes, I do that often, uh, especially if I still have the bark on it and I'm trying to save it. I want to uh, come in from the top instead of pulling it off. Oh, Mark's going up on one tonight. Oh, uh -oh. Right. Question for Doug. As Olivier Gomez has successfully turned a glued up piece, I, I think successfully more than once, how many times <laughs> will Doug attempt it before he succeeds? Well, it's been glued the original time and two more times. <laughs> so... And I'm not going to finish it on li on live either. <laughs> I've got to determine last time. I'm going to finish it, but not on the live. Out of curiosity, Doug, what kind of glue were you using? I was just I'm about to ask that. Good question. Uh, Tight Bond Original. That the, should have done it. Yes. That the, should have done it. Either, either okay. that or a lot of people that do segmented and glue ups use Tight Bond 3. Yes. Or even the new um, thick and quick or quick and thick or whatever they call it. Well, the only problem with Type Bond 3 is that it dries dark, whereas the original dries a light color. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, I didn't realize that because obviously I don't do glue ups. Oh, not very often. Anyway. And, and Andrew's just come in. Need you here. Hi, Andrew. Precious. I've got to say on uh, the piece you're doing at the moment, Doug, the medullary rays on that look absolutely exceptional. They are. They are. Yes. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what it comes out looking like. Now, Chris has said he's going to have another unboxing video soon, he hopes. All right. And Todd is asking, is there an issue with gluing up in the temperature in your basement? No, that's not the problem. The problem was me. <laughs> um, my, my method of gluing, because this is three pieces and I was wanting to take it apart, um, and just being lazy, I didn't glue it up properly. So it's all glued up properly now. I don't think it'll come apart. Hopefully it will when I'm ready for it to come apart, but not until. <laughs> and Raymond Wise has just come in. Good evening, Raymond. Hi, Raymond. 
And Mark is war warning everyone to uh, hide their abrasives because Mick is in. Yeah. Luckily, there's a little bit of water between us. Can't, can't swipe mine. He'd have a long way to go to get at mine. Yep. He's got a bit of a distance to get at mine, but it's all over land. Now, Mech says he bets that you watered the glue down to make it go further. No, but... no. I, I, <laughs> there's a whole school of thought of people that, that really like, they think glue or watering glue down is the way to go. Um, no. It doesn't need to be as thick as it is. But my way of thinking is if they wanted it that thin, if it would work better that thin, they would they would water it <laughs> to begin with. Um, well, one no, time I, I was wa working at the wood mill, and one of the young apprentices uh, glued up some large pieces, and that's what he did was he watered the glue down. Now, when I say large pieces, these pieces had to be about. 20 by 24 mm. and uh, right. no sooner did my gouge touch them than they exploded mm -hmm. and hit virtually every wall in the place and it was just a miracle <laughs> there weren't any customers around or anyone got hit right but it not literally sounded like a bomb went off in there mm. Mm. And I told him he'd have to uh, throw the other eight away, make new ones before I would touch them. So he learned a lesson. Fortunately, somebody else didn't get hurt. And Rich is back at his desk, so he's here. Oh, and Mick has has has, has a, assured me that I don't have to worry about my abrasive. It's only marks that he walks off with, so we're all safe. Thanks, Mick. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I've, I've got a hump right about there that I can see. I realize you guys can't see it, but I'm now, are you going it. to put a mortise or a tenon on there? I've got a tenon on it. I remember a few years ago at Harrogate, it was a good few years ago at Harrogate now, I took, because um, I did have a bit of money to spend at that point, I took a, an empty um, suitcase on wheels to to fill up uh, with stuff that I bought. At the last Harrogate show, Mick took a bloody wheelie bin to take <laughs> stuff home that he got, and it was all abrasives, and all, it all came off the stand. Good heavens. Mark S. has joined us. Welcome, Mark. Babe. Good evening, Mark. There are some nicknames that have gotten attached to people that I, I just have a hard time letting go of. I noticed. Precious and Babes are two of them. And Lucy's just come in. Good evening, Lucy. Hi, Lucy. Yeah, and Mark, Mark's put in wheelie bin, question mark. More like a skip load. <laughs> Mick Hughes has got more abrasives than Klingspore, and they're all Klingspore. All right, I think I've got that hump off of there now. Hard to tell. I got some because of the because it's got a natural edge. It's still got some fuzzies hanging off of it. Oh come on, there we go. I missed the stop button. Oh yeah, it's gonna be okay. Got to clean up that clean up this tenon.
And Micah said, win. And it was all free. <laughs> I think I'll that's take Nick you... shopping, shopping with me. <laughs> no, to tell you the truth, that's what happens when you steal stuff. It's free until you get caught. Just cleaning up this tenon so it goes in the chuck well. Use my big one inch skew just to get it generally shaped and I'll use my little quarter inch to clean up the edge right here. Make sure I got a nice flat spot. That looks great. And then come back in with my bowl gouge just to clean up the bottom of the tenon. I don't have to do this. I got more than enough depth. Holy cow, that stuff is so hard. There we go. There we go. Mark said, JP, Shug, and Andrew HGK all kept saying to me, he's using another piece and another and another. <laughs> <laughs> he is the only guy. No, he, uh, um, no, really. No, cling spore abrasives are absolutely exceptional. They are very good. They last a long time. Yes, Mick they Dews, are. Mick Dews is the only person I know that every time he sanded, he used a new piece of abrasive. Every <laughs> flame and time. Well, and the pieces, <laughs> the pieces that he discarded, didn't get chucked on the ground. They got chucked into his bag. Sure. And so we could take some home. Well, as Mick pointed out, he advertised uh, the stuff. Well, he did. He did. As did I. As did Mark. Just cleaning up this foot so that, the, or the underside of this foot, so I have less to do. Less sanding and less to do later on. And, Andrew just said, Andrew just said, he was sanding the pen and used a twelve-inch by twelve-inch sheet, and then oh, dear. His bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a said that's a nice bowl so far, Doug. So far, <laughs> there's always time to mess it up. No, wait a minute. Think positive, Doug. Oh, I, I'm not thinking negative. I'm just saying, just stating the fact. <laughs> I, you know, until yeah. it comes off the lathe, until it's done, you can mess it up. And Todd has said, the saying goes, sand like someone else is paying for the sandpaper. Yeah, but the thing is, Todd, someone else was. That's right. That's right. Yeah, first time I saw Russ Fairfield in person, he made that statement and Everybody in the room goes, oh. and I thought, you know, he's got a point. Because what we tend to do is use a paper, use a piece of paper, and we use it, and we use it, and we use it, and we use it. And, uh, you know, it, it's just not, it doesn't cut like it did when it was fresh. So, so that bottom is all but done. I'm happy with that. I'm going to look at the sides, just make sure. Still got a lump right here, but we're okay. Now, you want the bottom that large? Yes, yes. This is going to be a, a, a natural edge. Okay. So that, that inclusion is fairly deep. I may end up with a, with a little bit of a holder, but I may not either because... I don't want to go all the way to the bottom. I want to leave a little thickness right, right in this area. So let's turn it around. Let's turn it around. Yeah, you can always fill that in later. Yeah, absolutely I can. All right, now I can show you this 
this drive center. It fits in a chuck. It's made to go in a chuck. Uh, if I bring it in close, there you go. You can see that's that's pretty large. And this center point is quite big. I quite often will take a quarter inch or even a little bit larger drill bit and drill a little hole hmm. right in there so that it sinks in without any problem and lets these teeth come up closer where they can get a good bite. The whole point is that uh, they grab those two will grab the first two things and you don't have four trying to go in. It works quite well. Um, can you can you hold up that piece of wood again? Sure. Can you show the hole? Okay. I'm not <laughs> seeing, yeah, I was taught when you put one of those to have just the two areas in to make sure that the two wings are lined up with the uh, grain of the wood. Yeah, and that's what I did to begin with. And uh, then it turned on me a couple of times. So I just had, and I did not get my tenon small enough. I thought surely I had it small yeah. enough. For those of you who are wondering why Ruby said that, because if you put the, the two, as um, Doug is putting the, the chuck back in there, you can see the, the two sharp pieces coming out from the center. Mm -hmm. If you line that up with the way the, the grain is lined up, it's got a better chance of biting in. Yes. Yeah. yeah if, the, if the two teeth are lined up with the grain, easier to sink in. If it's going across the grain, it isn't going to sink in. Just not. Um, as I... As I proved, every time it spun around, one time it'd be with the grain, one time it'd be against the grain. So, yeah, if it's if it's not going in, that shows how hard that wood must be. Yeah, well, one, it's oak, and then it's also live oak, which I think is one of the harder oaks. May not be and, on the Jinka scale, and, but and, and it's it's fairly dry as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's dry and it's been there's around no, a while. All adds into, the, uh, adds into the equation. Yep. Yeah, there's lots of factors involved. All right. While I'm here, let me look at this. These dividers were already set to this chuck. Okay, there's a mark there. Should be perfect. Should be perfect. Give that a spin, just make sure we're good. See if we're I, close. Think we've, I think we've all had that happen to us, Doug. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And normally I am pretty careful to at least measure, make sure, you know, at least take a look. I may not make a mark, but I can take a look. Um, but it's not the worst thing in the world, you know? I'm not even touching. I'm just coming up close to it so I can see. And I'm right where, pretty close to where I want to be. Yeah, just Todd says he has a lot of different types of oak in his neighborhood. And this year was a banner year for acorn production. It was dangerous to walk on some sidewalks. Oh, I can imagine. Especially in bare feet. Yes. I'm, I'm always amazed how some years there are virtually no acorns. Other years, it's dangerous. <laughs> uh, there we go. There we go. Get everything out of my way. Yeah, that time was better on that chuck. It, it uh, sunk into that grain just a touch 
but not much, not much. Now, I'm gonna take one more little spin. That should drop right in there. Oh man, so close. Hey, Lucy, um, Doug is turning a piece of live oak, which comes from the uh, southeastern states yes. of America. Yeah. Along the coastal areas of Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, all that southern uh, ocean front kind of yeah, area. We don't, we don't get them up our way at all. No, we don't get them here. No, we, we have white oaks and red oaks, but in uh, what they call a water oak, but we do not get live oak. You will be able to see when Doug gets down um and clean some of the inside of this out you'll be able to see some very distinctive medullary rays you will also be able to see which i find a, a bit interesting that the um the sapwood which is on the outside of the tree on this particular piece that ducks turning is actually darker than the heartwood which is towards the center of the tree hmm. Uh, Susie's oh, asking, yeah, yeah. is this the same oak as we have in Europe? I'm not too sure, Susie. I don't think so. Um, no, I don't think so. There are that many different types of oak uh, around the world. The best thing to do is uh, go into, in fact, I'll put a link in once I find it. Go into the wood database. Here's what. Wayne was just talking about the medullary rays that you can see right through there going the, the grain is is going up and down vertically right now these are going through the grain through the tree and this would be the sapwood this is the hardwood um, they're just different the two the, you're right Wayne the sapwood is a little darker um, but up here yes yeah, darker and lighter but then you've got this knot down here that's that makes it dark again it's going to be, I think it's going to be a pretty bowl. Right. So what I've done there, I've put a, a link into the wood database. And um, this is just to the, the home page. You can actually go in there and you can type in the type of wood you're looking for. So if you just, uh, you can put in oak or there's a, a filter there to go through it alphabetically. So you, you type in or, or you put it, click on the O. And then you can see the the different types of oak um, from around the world. Now, Brent is asking, does it turn similar to red or white oak? Most of them. Uh, I've, I've, I've turned quite a lot, quite a lot of different types of oak. Um, um, I've turned she oak. I've turned home oak. Um, English oak, that the, the, what we generalize call in English oak. I've, I've turned quite a few different types of oak. They tend to turn similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I found the same thing. Yep. And Andrew's ah. put in there, there is more oak on oak, or is there more oak on Oak Island, Wayne? Now, <laughs> Oak Island is a reference to something that we used to talk about quite a few years ago on the lives. Uh, Brent Sabotka is in. Hi, Brent. And Roy, yeah. the boy has just joined us. And Roy's Roy? in as well. He must have been out. He, he's obviously late because he's been out doing some deals. All right. Oh no, oh. you've reminded Mark and he says he hasn't talked about Oak Island for ages. I guess we know what's coming tomorrow night, eh, Mark? Yeah, or oh, 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 don't, please. Right, now Todd has said, and this is something I was wondering about, but actually forgot to ask. Our live oaks don't lose their leaves in autumn, so they are effectively evergreens. Yes, I, I think it is an evergreen oak. I'm, am I right there, Doug? Yes, yes. Hmm, that, I didn't know. It's interesting.
I was actually quite, quite surprised the first time I heard about there being an evergreen oak. Oh, Ben must have just come in because Lucy's up oh, there. He is. Yep, yep. Ben's just Hi, come ben. in because Lucy asked him a question about what's for dinner tonight. Well, it's McDonald's, isn't it? Uh, the, the, usually, yeah. What these, what these trees usually do, they evergreen through the winter, and then as the new leaves come on in the spring, the old leaves pop off. Then. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, so they they're kind shed of the shedding. Yeah, they uh, shed the Heather's leaves. here as well. Evening, Heather. Hi, Heather. Hi, Heather. That, that spirit, uh, spirit with wood, wood stone, stone and bone. And bone. <laughs> I hope hope you're not getting all the snow we've been getting, Heather. Wow. Ben is having some rice from his new rice cooker. Oh dear. <laughs> I don't know why. That reminds me of my nephew called us one morning, early one morning. Uh, he lives down in Tennessee. My wife and I were in Kentucky. He calls up fairly early, and he's he he's the kid's half Korean, but he puts on this thick Oriental accent, and he's asking about fifty pound bag of rice. <laughs> we can't hardly understand him. Uh, we had more fun with that after he after we figured out what was going on. For those of you who have come in late, I'll, I will mention again that I'm not doing a live tomorrow night. Um, I, I've got a really sore right knee, and um, saw the GP this morning. Got some some meds for it. And Jane, my lovely wife, when I came back home, she said, "I've got a solution." I said, "What's that, pet?" She says, "A neck amputation." I thought, "Oh my god." <laughs> Kind she is, kind. <laughs> Jim, yeah, very. Oh, Jim Selby has joined us. Welcome, Jim. Hey, Jim. Now, Doug, Mark has a suggestion that you go up in size of gouge, as that one looks a little small for that job. Is that about a five-eighths? This is what I call a half inch. No, I go with a five-eighths. That's what I started with on the on the outside. See, no, Doug calls that a half inch, and that's the difference between American and UK sizes. Yes. Doug is calling yes. that a half inch. In the this UK, is what you guys we, call half inch. Yeah, we would call that a three eighths because we measure across the flute with ball gouges. In America, they measure across the bar. Right now, my you my usual tool uh, for turning balls is a three eighths uh, sorby uh, ball gouge. And I, I, I'm sorry, I disagree with Mark and I disagree with Ruby. That three eighths, uh, if it's sharpened properly, should eat that. Yes, yes. Now my, my standard ball gouge is a five eighths. English or American or Canadian measurement? American and Canadian are the same. They're the okay. diameter of the so uh, metal. Five eighths across here. Correct. That's yeah. what this is. Oh, so that's a half inch. To me, that's a half inch ball gouge. Yes, yes. This is what you use on yeah. most of the time, Wayne. No, no. I'm, I I use the the next size down from that. Oh, okay, okay. What I call the half yeah. inch. Yeah, and what I call the three eighths. Okay. Yeah. Because this wood, I knew this wood would be hard. I had gone ahead and sharpened this one. I haven't used it in forever. But it does do a great job. I the thing is, Whatever you're turning, use the tool that you're comfortable with. Yeah. Use the angle on the gouge that you're comfortable with. 
uh, yeah. because everybody tends to find um, the bevel angle that they're comfortable with and the, the tool that they're comfortable with. Absolutely. This one is the same size bar, but it just kind of goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. <laughs> this is a huge tool, but you're talking about doing some work when you got a big, heavy, out of balance piece. I've got something in my Right, Roy's just said you missed my question. He wants uh, to know, Doug, did he say how do you cook fried rice? How do I cook fried? I don't cook fried rice. He said lice, not rice. Yeah, rice. Oh, do you have a 50 pound bag of, of white rice? <laughs> How thick are you going to leave your outer edge, Doug? Well, if I have my way, I'm going to go down to about an eighth of an inch. Um, and if the wood has its way? It'll be whatever the wood says. <laughs> I'm, I'm about a half inch there now on both ends. They're about the same. So we'll just keep working at it. I'm going to go back to the shorter gouge. It's, that other one was just too long. I was bumping into stuff. Zed has said the wood decides. Most it of the does, time. It does, it does if you are smart enough to listen to it. Mm -hmm. the, the thing is that, that I, I get quite a few pieces on the lathe, and I let the wood start talking, and it keeps on saying, don't do it, don't do it, so I go back in the house. Hmm. <laughs> I'm still not down to the until I get this part down as thin as this, it's going to, every time I get to it, it's going to hit me. I'm going to hit it right there. Um, yeah. and it's just a matter of, you got to keep going almost straight in to get well, past it, that wing. If you took up some of that center section, then you could turn your uh, tool rest in as well. Now, yeah, Todd has actually said, won't an eighth of an inch thin on a bowl that big flex quite a bit and maybe chatter now i think this is one of the reasons um this is one of the reasons that doug has left that bulk in the middle because if you are going to turn something that thin down to around about eighth of an inch you've got to do it in stages so you get the 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 top half of the inside of the bowl that uh, doug's turning at the moment down to the size you want and get it fairly finished to to how you want it before you move on to the next section that way you've got a bulk of wood in the middle of uh, in the middle of the bowl which is actually going to help stop the flexing on the outside of the bowl very good explanation you saw me come back and take a little bit out and that's just to give me some room so i can come around this corner right here in the bottom of where I'm cutting. And the one thing I've got to be real careful of, not to let my hand slip over the tool rest. If I do, it's going to hurt. It will bite me. We're getting closer. Getting closer. We're a good bit further down, and I've got my wings. Of, that's as far as I'm going to go with the wing. In fact, I'm getting a little chip out. That's that, that uh, mm -hmm. the cambium layer. Uh, it's hard now, but it is starting to chip out. Just giving myself a little more room here. So 
So I'm going down into the bowl. Now, Roy has said he turned a very dusty Rocco bowl yesterday. Yeah, a Rocco can be dusty because a lot of it that, that we get to use over here is used in the, the building industry, so it does tend to be very dry. And Alice said, stop listening to the wood wind. <laughs> All right. Roy said he, he tried a, Roy said he tried an oval bowl yesterday, but it didn't work. An oval bowl. When you cut an oval bowl, you have to cut at one spot right at center for the whole mm. thing. Yep. Now, the, the, I, I don't know how Roy was doing this, and I, I don't think he's got um, the type of chuck to do a proper oval bowl. But when Doug's finished this one, you will actually see, because of the, the natural edge, you will actually see that it does look oval. Yeah, it will. It will. It's so interesting. From the sides and the top, it'll look oval. But then from the bottom, it'll be just as round as it can be. I have done them with very wide wings, and uh, it looked oval. Well, it had it was basically oval because it was about so long, but only about that wide. Uh, pretty interesting. We're getting there. We're getting there. Still got about inch and an eighth on that low part. So let's bring this back around and shorten that center bit just a little. And Todd has uh, said, how much do you have to drink before the wood starts talking back? That's a good question, Todd. How much do you have to drink before the wood starts talking back? Roy said it was a rectangle blank, but not a live edge. Okay. Yeah, rectangle blank will just was starting out with a rectangle. If you don't, if you don't uh, round it out on both ends completely. Yeah, you can definitely end up with a kind of an oval shaped bowl. Be the same idea as this. But you can get, um, I've seen this on um, probably Discovery Channel from one of the American Heritage sites um, where you can actually get a lathe that turns oval bowls. Yes. Yes, I used one when I was in the Netherlands. And on those, that's exactly what you were talking about. One at Ruby, where you, there's a spot. You, you, you turn right here, even though it's going that's up it. and down. Yeah, you, you turn you exactly right on center. Yep. And Todd is asking, is it easy to turn green wood down to an eight or three mil versus dry wood? Definitely. Definitely. Definitely, Definitely. Easier with green. it's a hell of a lot easier. I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> and and if, you, uh, to, wood, so. if, if you want to turn really thin, I would always recommend using green wood. And yeah. I would always recommend using a light to get the thickness rather than um, a set of calipers or, or, or your fingers. Use a light to get the thickness yeah. because the light will shine through green wood. Not so much. Uh, uh, dry wood tends to be a little more dense, so the light won't work as well, although it still does. But certainly on wet wood, use, use a light to gauge the thickness rather than fingers or calipers. Okay.
There was somebody who said not long ago that dry wood, you can't get shavings. So, you know. <laughs> you, you get, I've got to say, Doug, you are getting better shavings on the inside than you were on the outside, which is why I asked when you turn in the outside if it was very dry. Yeah. Yeah, and you, my experience is you, you never know whether it's going to be inside or outside that's going to turn nicer. In this particular situation, the grain or the wood on the inside is turning nicer than what was on the outside. Todd has said he's surprised Mark hasn't commented on the proper thickness for a funnel. The proper thickness for a funnel is having the inside diameter larger than the outside diameter. And Mark has said, still one of his favorite lives he's ever done, turn that bowl with Wayne, Ruby, and Pete. That was us e women, by the way. Really yep. thin. <laughs> Just over, um, well, the point Just five, over half five a mil. Just over half a mil. Um, and he could hear everyone holding the breath. Mm hmm. Well, I find when I leave a large piece in the center like that, when I get down to about where Doug's at right now, that's when I start checking my depth. Because sometimes that large piece in the center can make it deceiving as to how deep you are. And the other thing, especially with this pool that Doug is turning at the moment, I did notice that he did... Um, before he put the tenon on, he did actually go in a fair bit before he put the tenon on. Yes. And Zed's got a premiere later today, and he was able to go pretty thin. Not that thin, but thin for me. And Mark says, checking depth, Ruby, you chicken. You're darn right, Mark. But that's why I don't belong to the funnel club, too. I'm All right. seeing nothing. I'm seeing nothing. <laughs> I'm seeing nothing just in case the next time I do a live. Now, Ruby, I, I agree full heartedly with what you're saying. But as you can see right here, I'm only half an inch inside this, this edge right here. I've got another two inches below that. Now, I'm yeah, not but don't, go... forget, don't forget you undercut the bottom a bit. Exactly. That's, That's what I was so... just about to say. I'm not going to go all the way down. Uh, I'm only going to take this down maybe, maybe another inch. So, anyway, back to what I was doing. Yep. That's the word I was looking for, Ruby, undercut. Yep. Now, Mark's put a link in there. I don't know if that's a link to tomorrow night. Oh, no, it's a link to Zed's premiere later on. Thanks for that, Mark. Yeah, thanks for putting Zed's in. And go ahead and put yours in too, Mark, for tomorrow. Of course, I know I you haven't made that. it yet. You know, <laughs> yeah, I was about to say you can't do that because he hasn't set it up yet. What is it, an hour or something like that that you got to do it before? And don't forget, folks, tomorrow night is Worldwide Wood Turners. Yep. At 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and uh, midnight uh, British time. What is that GMT? Yeah. Greenwich Mean Time? It is, it is GMT at the moment, yes.
Oh, Todd. He said, it's a little known fact. Zed has replaced his rooster with a duck, and now he gets up at the quack of the dawn. Oh, now, Mark has put another link in, and uh, that looks like it might be for his live tomorrow night. It is. He's just confirmed that. So that last link that Mark's just put in is for his live tomorrow night. That will be starting, I would think, at uh, 8 o'clock GMT. Much better, much better. I've still got a little extra thickness right here on all four sides, but here and here are close, much closer. So we're going to go with that for now. Now I can worry about the bottom and the center and all those things. Lucy, there's five hours difference. Yeah. Five hours difference that right. sometimes can make you crazy or they can save your bacon. Right. Eastern Sea, I think Eastern Seaboard is five hours behind. Yes. Central is six hours behind, I believe. Yes. yes. After that, it gets a little strange. Yeah, then you get into mountain time, which is another hour. And then Pacific time, which is another hour. Yeah. But the, the states that are on mountain time here, um, some of them observe it, some of them don't. And so you never know. Like Arizona, they don't change times. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, they were talking about that here in Kentucky, and they never have instituted it. All right. Now, Mark, be nice to yourself. You're not rubbish. If you try hard, you will still have four corners when you're done. <laughs> I'm seeing All right. I'm seeing <laughs> Going back to my smaller bowl gouge, uh, that other one is starting to get a little dull. And Zombie has said, did you all hear about the support group for men married to women who talk too much? It's called On and On and On. <laughs> mm, mm. <laughs> right, four corners, Mark. Four bloody corners. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be bloody if you get on the wrong side of that tool rest. Tell you a, a bit of oh. advice, Mark. If if you want to do a wing ball with four proper corners, turn a circular ball and then cut it into square using the bandsaw. And Ward said he told his wife he could make a car out of spaghetti. You should have seen oh, her face when I drove past her. Oh, dear me. And Pete says he's advised Mark to start with seven corners. Now, Todd's made an interesting point. I didn't know that China only has one time zone. Hmm. Is this? Oh, right. Okay. There, there may be international time zones 
but China only decides to have one for the whole of their area. Hmm. You using an easy wood uh, tool there, Doug? The number one hover, just because it eats wood so fast. Now, for something like that, I'll quite often use the square and then use the uh, number one to kind of finish it. Uh-huh. Okay, I've still got just over, an, just over an inch between this and the, the thinnest part of my recess down here. So we're in great shape. Great shape for the shape we're in, as they say. So let's bring this back up. Doug, Doug, yes. if you wouldn't mind, for, the, for those people who haven't used that type of depth gauge before, could you put the, the camera on overhead and do that again? Yeah. If you don't mind? Yes, we can do that. That's a good, good thought. Back to overhead. And don't forget to allow for your undercut. Don't need to. I'll show you why. This piece is a measurement piece. This goes from my headstock to the face of my jaws. Okay. Okay. So I put this in up against my headstock. Now this piece, the end of this dowel is in line with the edge of this piece of wood on the bottom. So all I have to do is take that rod, that dowel, put it right up to the bottom of my piece. And I look down here underneath. Uh, that bowl is not gonna let you see. But anyway, I could, all I gotta do is look at the gap between the two bases. And I've got a little over an inch there. And the reason I don't have to do the, I don't have to worry about the undercut is because this piece is measuring to the face of the jaws. So I know exactly how much wood is between the face of the jaws and the end of the inside of this piece here. So I've got a little over an inch of space. If I go down another three quarters of an inch, I'll still have half an inch between them of, of, of wood before I go through it. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Okay, here we go. That was a good suggestion, Wayne. Yeah. And it's, it's the, what I like about it so much is that I don't have to worry about a recess there. Whether if I did, a, you know, if I'm turning on a recess or if I've recessed my tenon a little bit like I did on this one. And I wanted to do that so I could have a leave a foot. This is the one thing I really don't like about this lathe. The, if I put this back on the end. Yeah, this the vertical part that holds the, the tool post is on the side of the banjo instead of being oh on top. yeah it, 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 it's a, it's, so it's on the set. yeah yeah it's in the way so that means i have to come away from my workpiece a little further than i probably normally would now what i'll do here since i know how how deep i can go i'm not going to completely clean out my yeah you're there i'm not going to completely clean out the center i'm just going to take pieces of it out until i get to the depth i want to be at and then I will clean it all because this gives me a gauge to look to see how deep I am. Okay. And Mark, Mark's put in depth gauge win, best, blah, 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 yada, 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 lol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the, yeah. The other type of depth gauge that has, uh, there we go, that has the, the long wing and the uh, dowel that goes down through the center, those are great, except for one problem. How do I make sure I'm in the same place on this piece, on this bowl that has an uneven rim? If I had a flat rim, that'd be fine. But on this, it's really of no use. All right, I think I'm where I want to be as far as depth goes. So I'm going to put that tool aside for right now. Depth gauge, 
yada yada yada. <laughs> Mark is the only person I know who, when using his depth gauge, it worked absolutely brilliant until he turned it round and took the tenon off, and that's when he funneled it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, Mark. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Or had a beautiful piece. What, page what I would turn has just come in. Hey, Joaquin, how you doing? All of this can be done with a bowl gouge, no problem whatsoever. In fact, I'll take my last pass with a bowl gouge. But the carbides do allow you to hog that out fairly quickly. At this point, I'm almost at a depth, uh, an inch of depth. <laughs> so Mark, in reply to me, has said he's got to have a reputation for something. Nobody said it had to be a good reputation. Lol. And Roy made a 3D printed depth gauge. Depth gauge, not gauge, gauge. I do believe my business. What I is said, he's doing well, Doug. He Good. took the day off to deal with banking and the like, and glad he caught you live. All right. Okay, I'm going to quit on that one simply because that cutter. Is getting dull. Not sure if I got another one over there or not. Mm, mm, mm. That was Tordes good. Tordes said, uh, Mark is in playing. He's a good other example. <laughs> I tell you what I need to do is get my longer tool rest. That's what I need to do. If and I can find it. Now, I have seen and I've tried this myself and for me it didn't work but i have seen people who went to get where they get to this stage on doing a natural edge bowl they will rather than um use the tool rest going in like you had there sloping in um from your side towards the center they will actually turn the tool rest and slope it in going from the far side Mm -hmm. of you yeah like that because all, all you turn and then is um the, the bottom of the ball you're not actually touching the sides i've got to say i i found it very difficult to do i can get in there a whole lot closer that way because it gets it gets this part the support part out away from my my work. The professor's just come in. Hey, professor. All right. Make sure I've got everything tight because that'll drive me crazy if it's not. The only issue is going to be this outer edge, and I'll have it to. Is, yeah, that's the that's the but, only issue, which is where I'd probably recommend uh, for that outer edge, rather than using a ball gouge, you actually do use a carbide. Uh, right. but you're going to have to you're going to have to have the handle way across the far side of the tool rest as well. Yep. Yep. Now, yep. Unless, unless you have a bowl gouge that has um, has been ground to about sixty degrees. Yeah, and I've got one of those too. Got to raise this up. I was way too loud. Now Todd, Todd has just uh, come in there with many thanks to Mark. Doug, Wayne, Terry, Brian, and Pete for doing the lives the last few years. 
lots of learning and entertainment. Thank you very much, Todd. Very much appreciated. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That's why we do it. It's, it's, it's for you guys. It's I could turn a lot of a lot more things at a faster rate of speed without the camera on, for sure. Right. But, Martin Forbes just come in. Evening, Martin. In the heat is dead. Uh, evening, Doug. Evening, all. Just managed to pop in for five minutes to say hello. We'll have to catch up later. Very interested in this, as the local club has a live edge turning competition later in the year. Very good. Well, Very good. Good. Now, we picked up some ideas from this. Especially what not to do. Well, I haven't yeah. seen you do anything that you shouldn't yet. Well, I'm not going to do this. <laughs> I. Uh, Normally, that, that kind of thing doesn't throw me off so bad, but this time, I'm wanting to stick my hand in here and, and touch. Yeah, and that's not. No, the, the, yeah, that's that's where I was finding Doug to tell you the truth. Yeah, I understand. That's I wanted to try it, um, but I think I can get in and get this. Now, what I could do is do all that and turn on this side, and I think I'd be in much better shape. But I'm gonna keep it over I here. I would I would feel more comfortable with the tool rest turned the way you have it now. Yes. Yes. Yep. I I certainly found that as well. I I just thought I'd mention it because I have I have seen a couple of people do that. You you tool to. rest from, from the other side I, and uh, but I I just couldn't get away with it. In fact, I touched that edge just enough to knock the bark loose on my hand. <laughs> In between taking aspirin every day and oh. blood pressure, I tend to bleed like a stuck pig. So, okay, we're going to go back to the raffin' style of doing the bottom. So, Ward has said to Lucy, what do you call a short mother? A minimum. I left that one for you. Thank you. And Todd has also said, and also thanks for the wisdom of the various earworms who are willing to share their knowledge. Uh, well, to me, that's what these things are all about. Okay, we do have, we do go off subject quite a lot and we talk about various things and we have a laugh, but we are not shy of giving our knowledge out. Um, when it's appropriate, going off topic, well, we, I've well, never heard we'll of even do it when it's not appropriate. <laughs> and and so said is said that sawdust makes a great coagulant, Doug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he yeah. likes reverse turning. I've done reverse turning. You just yes, have, have to, to make sure that your chuck is well locked onto the spindle. Sure. Yeah, works quite well. Quite well. And P Peter says he uses a curve tool rest, and I do find that those help significantly. That's something else I can't get away with. I've heard, yeah, I've heard both. It, some people say I've, it's I, the I, greatest I, thing, and I've, others. I, and I went out and specifically bought, um, I think it was a robust curve tool rest and I still can't get away with them um, probably because of the, the type of cut I'm wanting to do um, well I made that's... mine and and it's it, it goes straight for a ways and then it curves into the center right what I is tend there... to find is is yeah. when, I, when I'm using the curve tool rest, I'm okay going down the edge of the ball. But once I get around to the bottom of the ball, I the, 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 the handle of my ball gouge or the, uh, the bar of the ball gouge wants to hit on where the, the rest is connected to the tool post. Yeah. Mm. And that really annoys me. Doug, 
Yes, ma'am. If you don't mind my making a suggestion, why don't sure, you try ahead. lifting your tool rest just a hair so that the tool rest, so the tool is angled down a little bit. Yeah, I and am. a little more it than is. that. It is angled down. I I would still raise it just a little more. Oh, a little more, you think? We can try yeah. that. Mark has just suggested the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would uh, definitely angle down. So. Right, Lucy has put in that Wayne and Ruby both have so much knowledge. Thank you, Lucy. Well, uh, thank you. That's only because of how long we've been hanging around, right, Wayne? Yeah, probably, Lucy. Um, Ruby, probably. Mick Duser said, Wayne was a good source of advice for my turn and adventure last weekend. Oh, uh, hang on. Uh, so was Mark. On, on that platter you did. It wasn't just me. Yes, that was an excellent platter. Um, Peter said, I agree, Lucy. So much knowledge between them. Years and years and... And the professor has just got his new Glen Teagle carbides today. Can't wait to give them a go. Um, Glen Teagle is the uh, main producer of carbides in the UK. And I, to tell you the truth, I haven't seen a bad review on any of his tools. I've still got a ton of wood in here. <laughs> Mark said, thanks, Mick. Sulks off into the corner, sobbing. <laughs> and Todd has said, don't cry too much milk. Don't, don't try too much, Mark. You'll water down your beer. Oh, God. What it was, Mick put a question in. He, he was turning a rather large platter. I think it was about 23-inch platter from Ash. And uh, he put a question into a group that um, Mark... Um, Mick and I are in um, asking about what size of rim uh, Mick said he was thinking about just doing an inch uh, Mark said no that size of platter an inch and a half rim and I put in mm, I, I think you might go you might want to go a little bit bigger uh, than an inch and a half with that size of platter and that was it we both give advice And we don't charge for it. No, no charge for advice. Oh dear. Mark is, mm -hmm. no, is no longer drinking beer. He's on to bourbon now. He's on the bourbon. <laughs> oh, God, here we go. Uh, Pete, Pete, are you listening, Pete? Seeing as how you're with him, don't let him go on Amazon, please. Seems like I remember a story about that. There's been a few, Doug. There has been yes, a few. Yes, yes. Where things started worst, showing up just a few days yeah, later. The, yeah, the, the worst one was uh, he, he wasn't actually drinking bourbon that night. I think he was drinking vodka that night. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think it was, as I remember. Now, Doug, you're cutting from the center out. Yeah. I, I find that cut easier going from the outside in. Well, normally I do too, Ruby. Well, that's not so bad that time. Well, I start with the handle way over to the right and then make an arc coming in. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
turning it up on edge right now trying to get this there's a line in here at the transition that i'm trying to go across kind it's of a, a skew small cut. line don't forget you're going to be sandy yeah this was deeper than that okay i think i'm there now so let me take care of my knuckle here real quick Well, that's one way to color your piece. One way. Except I wanted this natural. <laughs> if this turns out the way I want it to, there's a group that I've been dealing with. Uh, in fact, I've turned a piece for them a while back. Um, they, they have a whole group of artists Man, I wish this would turn over the other way so I could go that way with it. Uh, anyway, uh, there's a group of artists that will make a piece of art for them, and they will auction it off online uh, for a charity. The charity has been. Um, that's why I'm going inside out, so I don't extend that tip so far. Um, Lift the handle a little more. Anyway, this the what they have been doing in the past. Their charity was uh, human trafficking, stopping it and catching those folks who do that, and rescuing the folks who have been trafficked. Yeah, there's a lump right there. I'd like to get out. Um, but they've just changed. Um, they were doing that, and they've raised a good bit of money for that cause. They just changed one of the guys, kind of the lead of the group is a uh, orthopedic surgeon and he just had a case where a lady came into his hospital she was uh, I forget what he said her nationality was now anyway uh, one of those southeast Pacific islands still got a lump right there but I'm gonna have to fix my scraper since I let it fall off and land on its nose. Do you have a do you have a, a round easy wood? I do. I was using you, that a while ago. You could use it's a finishing tool. You could use it on this section here. Let's see what it'll do. Just make sure you elevate you'll find if you check where center is you'll find you have to elevate the tool rest a bit. Yeah, it should be. Well, it's above center now. Got to turn my cutter. And if this doesn't do it, I do have another one. I'm just, I'm seeing it right now. We could change if I need to. Okay. Yeah, I'm well above center now. Uh, anyway. Okay, because you can always lift the handle. This fella in, in, talking with this lady as his patient before he did her surgery on her leg. Oh, uh, Steve's in. Hey, Steve. Hey, Steve. Now I got to ask, which Steve? <laughs> oh, sorry. He's got his name in is uh, Steve T. That is... Oh, Steve. That, uh, that, Tordell. That's, yeah, that's Steve Tordell. Um, nice to see you in, Steve. Oh my, got that around to a sharp area and it cut so nice. So anyway, this lady uh, had an infection from her foot all the way up to her knee. He's talking with her. She had been told twice that her leg was going to have to come off. Oh dear. To save it, to save her. And he and his team went in. They were able to go in and clean out all the infection, saved her leg, and in his research, what he found was that folks in these South Pacific Islands have a huge rate of diabetes. 
And so it's very common for them to lose their legs from complications. Much, much, much better. I still, I've got a little place in the center. Usually so, I put a pencil mark on that place. Yeah, well, it's, it's high enough uh, and I can see it, Ruby. Um, so anyway, they have changed their, their charity cause now to helping these folks as well as to do away or try to find a cure for the diabetes in that area. Uh, if they can f actually find a cure, it'll be amazing. So anyway, if this piece comes out as nice as I think it's going to come out, they will get this after it's finished. Much I better. Have no, I have no doubt it's going to come out that nice because being that hard, it's going to sand up beautifully. Yes, yes. I, I think it will. Not at well. I'm sure it will sand nicely. Okay, we're at, we're at an hour and a half now. Um, How are you fine, Doug? Just carry on. Yeah, it's not supper time yet. Close. <laughs> Close. I'll just be but, having a late supper tonight because I'll have to cook mine. Yeah. Well, there's uh, a shame. Or you could uh, eat from Ben's menu and go to McDonald's. I think I'd rather go Chinese personally. No, I've got a pot roast I'm going to cook. If, oh, if nice. this vacuum gets too loud, you all holler at me and I'll mute myself. Okay. Jean had a curry for her tea tonight. Curry is one food I can't eat. All right. Okay. I, when I was younger, I um, was severely food poisoned with curried food. It put me in the hospital and... Uh, to this day, even the smell of curry uh, sets my stomach off. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. uh, Ward is asking you, Ruby, uh, how is your husband? Well, he's doing okay. Uh, he can't stand or walk, so he's been put into a nursing home. And uh, as badly as he wants to come home, I'm afraid that's where he's going to be staying until uh, something happens that uh, he can walk. But thank you for asking. At least I know while he's there, he's safe. Yes. <laughs> that's uh, oh. that's the most important now, uh, point. It definitely is, Ruby. It definitely is. Um, Mark put in there um, about you saying you've been going for an hour and a half. Um, and Mark has put in and said, yeah, why not, Doug? Uh, Terry went went on for 27 hours. Oh, my <laughs> word. And, and, and Terry said, yes, but I did do, do a bit of coloring as well, Mark. Um, and and Mark, Mark did come back that it was very nice too, Terry. <laughs> and, it, and it was very nice coloring. It was It was a beautiful piece, Terry. All right, that was really yeah, I, strange. I just had one of my lights go off and come back on. I think I'm going to have to start doing longer lives. <laughs> I mean, the, the the last last one I did, the the piece got finished in about it was, it was 25, 30 minutes. Yeah, it was pretty quick. <laughs> oh. Terry said, in fact, he had to do my colors as well. But you have to admit, you have to admit, Terry, that the colors did look good. I'm, just, I'm getting these wings here where a little bit of a tool mark on both ends. Once I get those, it'll speed things up quite a bit. I think what I need to do is get about 10 of your worms in just to remind me to slow down. <laughs> you mean the ones that you have now don't remind you? Well, the, the, they certainly try, but um, the, I, I think I said to Mark, um, 
the following day, I said, once I get in that zone and, and start turning, it, it, it just happens. I, I just start turning and I start right. finishing stuff and it, it, it just happens. I, I agree. I, I tend to be the same way, uh, Wayne. Could it be? Oh, I do believe. Ben, yeah, the, Ben has said that Terry, uh, Terry also waffles a fair bit, which accounts for half the time. <laughs> waffle. Uh, he didn't, uh, in all fairness, Ben, Terry didn't waffle very much on that present presentation. He he moved right along. Uh, Mick has said there's not enough wood in my workshop for a 27-hour live. Oh, no, I don't know about that. You'll have to go check um, his workshop out, right, Wayne? Yeah, the, the professor said you um, to me you'll have to turn ten balls in your life to make up to make up the time to an hour. Now there's a challenge: make now, ten balls identical. There make was ten one time balls you turned, I know you turned two. Been a while, Ruby. You, I know you turned right, two the, one the, time, Wayne. Yeah, the, the, the only time I did. Now, was that the one that I put together and did um, Pearson on? Well, I can't remember. I don't remember. Now, I don't do very much production work. I, I do a little bit, but not very much. But the the best piece of production work I did was way before I started doing videos. And I was asked by uh, a couple to do wedding favors uh, for their medieval wedding. And they wanted um, 75 goblets uh, for a medieval wedding, which I did out of ash. Um, all the same size uh, and everything. And I was really well chuffed with them. And I also did uh, special goblets uh, out of purple heart from the, for the bride and groom, which were around about 12 inches tall, I think they were. And I've got to say that that wouldn't went down very well. That would have been around about when did I do that? Um, probably 1996, 1997. Okay. By the way, this sanding section is brought to you by Clingsport. <laughs> there we go. No, somebody somebody did ask, Doug. Sorry, I missed that. But somebody did ask, is that quite the soft pad you've got on the um, the arbor there? No, this one is very hard, in fact. My lower grits, in fact, for all of these, I'll just use one this one pad. But when I've set it up so that I'm changing, let me just stop that. I've got, you see the, the intermediate pad here, that's very firm. This pad is very soft. And, and what I usually do is I have one grit on, on one of these. And for my two lower grits, I use the hard top pad and for the two softer grits I use the just the the softer pad and um, but for right now I'm just doing I'm just changing my paper and using the hard one all the way through <laughs> now Steve has said uh, that he has to turn a piece that is in three sections and accurately sized from a drawn for his club challenge and he's really looking forward to it I would look Steve, forward I, I, to something like that. I, mean, I, I can't actually say that uh, has been a problem for Steve. I mean, with the with no. the work that he's been doing over the past couple of months, uh, from what I've seen, uh, yeah. either through demos on the World Wide Wood Turn Club or stuff that he's doing himself. I mean, the uh, the progress that Steve has made into uh, sort of off center and out of center turn is absolutely huge. And I, I would second that good. in a heartbeat. Yep, I'm with you. I'm with you. Good stuff. Yeah, I tend to do a fair amount of production turner, turning, so I'm used to uh, having to mat make things match. And it comes down to using rulers and calipers. Yeah. Yep. All storyboards. Yes, definitely storyboards. 
And Andy is saying uh, he's got to say good night. He's got to be up at 4 a.m. Uh, for work. He's got to drive to, to London. Have a good one all. Yep. Night, safe, night. Safe travels, Andy. Be careful, Andy. I don't know about. No, but I, I believe I'm right. I'm, I'm not too sure here. I believe I'm right. Um, Steve was once in a, a podcast many, many years ago, um, which was a live podcast, and somebody talked about turning a banana or doing a banana, and Steve went on there, and I believe this was his first off-center piece of work. I'm not too sure. I may be wrong about this. But he actually turned a banana uh, on the lathe uh, off center without knowing what he was really doing. He did a very good job of it. Oh, he did. I did not see the first one, but I did see the second one. And it was phenomenal. But he has gone on that now since then. Um, Oh God, I, I am big enough, Steve, at the moment, but he has done so much research into off-center turning mm -hmm. and how you do it, where you get the information from and everything. It's it's just absolutely brilliant. Yeah, Steve, I'd, I'd like to see a copy of that uh, diagram that you're working from. I think it'd be interesting. And Pete says that in his giveaway in a couple of weeks, it could be all of Terry's tools. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Susan oh. asking, is there a link to Steve's things um, on YouTube? If I, I don't know if he's still got it. I think he's still got his videos up there. But if you look at uh, Temple Boy Turnings, um, I'll, I'll just have a look and see if I can put a link in. Yeah, he's put it up. Uh, it's there. Oh, and Steve from SK Crafts has joined us. Good evening, hey, Steve. Steve. It's good to have you along, Steve. Both Steve's. In fact, all of you, every last one of you. It is good to have every last one of you here with us tonight. Now, Steve just said he's dropped the Temple Boy turnings and he's trying to be all professional and everything. Right so now, I've just I've I've just got in gone into YouTube, um, two Temple Boy turnings. So I don't know if you've deleted everything, Steve, but uh, the link is still up there. So I am going to put it in for people who haven't seen your work. All right, let's get these wings with this grid. And good evening, Steve. Um, I, I heard you mentioned there. That's Steve S.K. Crafts. Steve Cavell. That's looking quite nice, Doug. Well, thank you. It's, it's sanding up as nice as we thought it would. Very Are you well, going to you, leave Steve. that top edge all hairy? I'm going to no. I'm going to knock it back. Okay. I'm not going to make it smooth, but I'm. I am going to knock it back. That's a pretty distinct distinct grain line between the heartwood and the cambrium. It really is, right? Or the softwood. See, there's a heartwood. Here's the line between, and there's the softwood. Then the cambium is right just the edge, and there's really not, it almost looks a little bit wormy. I think I'm just going to hand sand that. I was going to run the sander over, but I don't think I will. Where'd that piece go? No, I haven't. Um... 
I obviously haven't seen any of Steve's stuff on TikTok because I'm not on TikTok. Um, Neither am I. Yeah, Steve has demoed um, a couple of few times on the Worldwide Woodturners group um, because that tends to be on the Worldwide Woodturners group. It tends to be members that do the demos and Steve's has always been a good one. Yes, I, I would second that in a heartbeat. Of course, that's not to say that Doug's haven't been pretty good too. Well, thank you. I didn't think you were even listening to us. Absolutely. Now, Steve SK has just put in, he is funnel free for two years, Ben. <laughs> Whoops, that's done it. Hmm, <laughs> <laughs> Steve, you might sh not shoot us <laughs> anything. Now, Haley is asking Steve, do you go under a certain title or name on TikTok, please? That's uh, Steve T. We're talking to Steve for the Velvet Fountain, too, now. Right. Just sanding this cambium layer because uh, it was, as it is. That was a good term, uh, Ruby. Harry. It was Harry. We're just knocking it back. And I'm not going to do a whole lot with it. I'm not going to smooth out like little chippy area right there. I'm not going to fool with that other than just sand across. Sand across it. Get the fuzzies off of it. The hairies off of okay. it. Right. Uh, Steve Trudell has said that pretty much on his social media he is going by Steve T everywhere now. Hmm. That is going to hold a lot of fruit if you were to use it as such. Mm -hmm. He's also put in all Steve T. Woodturner. And Mark has just put in a link to um, Steve's TikTok uh, page. Thanks for doing that, Mark. Now, I do still have to do the outside of this, so. But I am gonna I'm gonna throw some walnut oil on the inside of this just so you can see what the little dude's gonna look like. It's gonna be I think it's gonna be pretty bold. Oh, I think you're right. Now I'm on, I said earlier, I was thinking about possibly sending this to um, Art for Hope or Art Giving Hope is the name of it, I guess. It used to be Art for, Art for OUR, which was Operation Underground Railroad. Um, but they have since changed the name Underground, Operation Underground Railroad ran into some trouble. Some of its people were not quite as ethical as they should have been. Up up here, if you said that, it would sound like they were sending them all to Canada. But yeah. That's where it, the Underground Railroad went to. Right, with the slaves. Exactly. Yes. Um, but they chose this name. This was much more modern uh, because of the global issue with human trafficking. Um Right, Ruby. Steve has just sent you the Spectron for the, the club piece. Yeah, I just received it, and uh, it looks like it's going to be a great challenge. Well, I just had to tighten that, and now it won't come off. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Oh, no, I, I didn't even realize nice Jim Selby was in. Um, but, but Jim Selby is in, but he's got to go because he's got to go back to work. Well, Jim, glad you were in for a few minutes. Actually, for a long time. This has taken 
longer than we like to do, but that's okay. And it's not going to be done, but it's going to be where you all can kind of get a good idea of where we're going. Paper towel here. This is a doctor's water oil. I used to use the other one. And I went to order some and I could only get it in one place. But lo and behold, I found this. And uh, significantly less expensive for the same thing. I put that on the overhead so I can see. Oh, that's nice. Get the glare off. Yeah, it really brings out that golden oak color when I put just a little finish on it. Get a little on this rim. I still so, find that strange with having the, the sapwood darker than the hardwood. <laughs> it is strange, isn't it? And lots of variations in that sapwood. Right there is some yellow. Oh, yeah. Um, quite interesting. Most of it's a nice brown. But here I'm, got, I'm surprised at the color. high contrast. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely don't get that wood up this way. Yeah, this lots and lots of um, nice comments coming through, Doug. Make it there, and I'll pick this up. So you all um, Yes, Ed. Yes, they are the medullary rays. Yeah. Um, Steve, that is, it's called Live Oak, and it is uh, from the the southeastern okay. states of America. Yes. yes. There you can see the the center is the heartwood. Oh, if I raise that up, I can get some air too. Centers the heartwood, and it's lighter than the sapwood. Sapwood is quite a bit darker. And there it is. Oh, that's gorgeous. Right there, that little patch is quite yellow. There it is. You can almost see it. Uh, you can see it's lighter, but it's a, a very yellow color. Um, it does it looks to have, well, now that the oil's on it, you can't hardly see it couple of places it looks like maybe some worm trails um don't know if that's the case or not it may just be some places in the wood but now this walnut oil will will harden it actually dries and hardens unlike a lot of the oils that are out there and that crack is going this crack goes all the way through to right here under here it's it's my oil is leaking out <laughs> so uh, but that's fine is that, anyway, doctor, is that Dr. Kirk's oil? This is a, uh, it's doctor's. Just okay, doctor's that's probably location. Kirk's oil then. Yeah. Um, yeah, Steve, Steve said very pretty. Uh, nice collaboration with Mrs. Nature, Doug. Yeah, Miss Nature <laughs> does a good job. I really appreciate what she does. But anyway, that comes out and uh, you do see, I get it, yeah. See the lines going coming vertically up through the rim? That's that's yep. the medullary rays that, that Wayne keeps talking about. And they are quite pronounced, very pretty. Give a lot of if, character. If to you this turn place. it over, I think we can see them even even better on the end. Yeah, right there. Oh, well, that's see the medullary yeah. rays. Yep. Let me uh, let me try this. Just a couple of drops of oil, not a bunch. And this has not been sanded back here, so. Oh yes. Yeah. That, They're going to be all really sanded nice, up. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be gorgeous. So, uh, with not a whole lot of to do and fanfare, I'm going to say bye. <laughs> it's as uh, we've we've gone over, but it's been good. Uh, I've got another 30 to 45 minutes of sanding and oiling, and uh, got to get that tendon off too. But anyway. Good to have you all along. It's been fun. Uh, great questions. Been glad to have you all here. Wayne, Ruby, thank you all so much. Wayne will not no have a live anytime. tomorrow night. No, I'll not yeah. have a live tomorrow night. I will obviously be in um, the group chat on worldwideworldturners.org. 
Uh, no. If you want to come along to that, uh, it doesn't cost anything. Just right. go along to the website, worldwidewoodturners.org, and go down to events, and you can join in. There, yeah, there they, always got, they always have a really good demo. Yeah. I don't know. I, is Scott tonight, or is he next week? I don't know. We, we, don't, we don't tend to find out who is demoing until the night. We, right. which I find I, I find that quite pleasant to tell you the truth. I do too. I do too. It, so you're not uh, guessing. You know, do I really want to stay for this one or not? Um, but Scott did. Scott Hampton said something about it last week, and I forget if it was this week or next week where Scott's going to be demoing. And that's always quite interesting when he demos. So uh, come on out, whether whoever it is, it'll be a good demo. We do gallery. Um, if you join in. You are welcome to show a piece. Show, show us something that you just recently turned. Um, if I get this one done, it'll be shown completed tomorrow night. I've got I, another I piece. I expect in the other it room. will be. Eh, very well, mate. Uh, <laughs> I've got another piece in the other room that is finished. Um, it's for a, a uh, exchange, but we're also doing a video on it. So I'm waiting for the other turner to get done with his. Uh, and then we'll show them roughly the same time <laughs> so anyway other than that uh we know about wayne ruby you got anything going on uh just some students that'll be right. coming in for lessons all righty those are putting, always a good thing and putting together i've got a two-day demo um coming up and not this weekend the following weekend so i'm trying to put together all the pieces i need to uh demo Excellent. Excellent. All right. With that, we're going to say good night, everybody. So good night. Good night. Good night. We hit those.